So I'm not gonna sit here and cry and you know make stuff up and just you know fake onion tears, crocodile tears. I'm just gonna tell you how it is. A lot of card games have been very special for me as a nerdy Asian kid in the 1990s and with very few friends. I had one friend we talked to recently, he played Magic too, and he was the one who introduced me to a Magic community, and it was great. You know, having friend, not having friends when you're a kid and being, I guess the way I would put it is a lot of Magic players, they tend to be, at my age, they tend to have been nerdy, they tend to have been picked on. I know our gym teacher would always pick on us when we would play Magic. It's just out of the blue, it's just come out of the blue. It's like we're eating lunch, it's like, oh, is that Dungeons and Dragons? And no matter how many times you tell him it's magic, he was like, oh, Dungeons and Dragons. And then he would make funny, you know, funny jokes that then the jock kids would laugh at. So I grew up in a society where bullying was not only okay, it was just what people did. Um, obviously, Columbine, and you, you hear, you know, all these stories about people being bullied. I'm sure it's slightly different today with the social justice and social media elements of it. But back then it was really hard to be a Asian kid who doesn't really play sports. Um, I did play tennis and track, but they're not the popular sports, right? Like football or basketball or something like that. So a lot of times, you know, as I grew older, I realized that the things that I was attracted to, computers, I, I built my first website when I was a sophomore, maybe a junior in high school, and I thought that was great. I was always messing with computers, and you know, I built my first Dell, kind of, you know, kind of. As a, and I thought it was very intriguing that there were people like me um, who maybe they were socially awkward, and maybe they did not really have friends. And then there's a game you can go to. We had a Wizard of Coast store. You could go to the Wizard of the Coast store, which was owned by which Wizard of the Coast, and right next to JC Penney's and Exxon Mall, and hey, there's a bunch of awkward kids like you, and they're your age. Um, when I played Magic, everybody who played was young, who's my age. You didn't really have the, the old people like I would be today playing Magic, because Magic was for younger kids, right? It wasn't viewed as collectible, it was just a playable game that you would play. And you could meet people from other schools, even your school. You're like, oh, hey, I don't know. I, you know, I, do you go to our, my school? Oh, I, I, what class is it? And so on. And that is what magic is to me. It's what magic has always been, even though, you know, I've been very upset about the current direction of magic. I think the current direction of magic is more mainstream, more, hey, you know, Post Malone, Tolarian Community College is not like a super celebrity, right? Alpha Investment is an ultra celebrity. Uh, no, that was not my record. I didn't know anybody in Magic uh, in middle school or elementary. Because, I mean, again, what, how we got our news was in a magazine a month. And the magazine's main purpose wasn't really to get news. It was just to have the price guide in the back. Inquest. Very different time growing up with the game. And the one other element I have with all these games I have attachment to was a period in time uh, in my life which was a little bit more difficult than it is now. My life is really easy now. I'm incredibly wealthy, so I'll just put it out there. Uh, there's not really too much uh, difficulty I face on a day-to-day -day basis. The only difficulty is should I get another dog, should I get another cat, should I adopt a foster, should I foster a dog, you know, or should I adopt a dog straight up? That is what I spend uh, probably that's probably the most difficult situation I put myself in. And then and again, at any time you could just say, oh, I don't want to be in a situation. I don't need to foster another dog. In Yasha, the card game, I, I go back to that card game and I love the anime. They came up, I think Score came out with a card game. Dave and Adams had it on sale for like 10 cents a pack or 25 cents a pack. I bought it. I bought a ton of it from Dave and Adams. I kept buying it, kept buying it. I, kept, I would have bought more of it, but at the time I was in law school. And when I was in law school, obviously I lived in an apartment. So people like Rudy Chan says, oh, hey, you can buy pallets of Pokemon in your apartment. No, I, I, I mean, where would you put it all? The reason you live in an apartment is because you have no money. And the reason that 
the apartment has no space, right? You're not gonna rent a luxury apartment just so you can buy some in Yasa cards at discount. So that's kind of another thing that I think he has wrong where people in small apartments are supposedly ordering these pallets of Pokemon cards. Where would they put it all? Because <laughs> that's a problem I had when I'm trying to buy in Yasa cards. Eventually, the reason that you you don't own a home is because you don't have the money. The reason you don't have the space, you know, the reason you, you are in the apartment, for God's sake, is because you need to save space, therefore saving money, right? Like it would be weird if you had all that money to buy all these cards and you lived in a small apartment, unless it was like Hong Kong, New York, where it's very expensive. But then th in that case, it would be even weirder, right? That for that type of apartment to have the, all that bulk giving the rent that you're paying. So anyway, go, going fast forward, when you take these cards to a convention and there's a Sango, there's a Moroku, there's a Sippo, there's you know a Inyasa, obviously a Kagome, there's some villains that are very popular and you, you, flow, flow, you put the bulk out at the convention, you say free for a dollar, which is the cheapest, it's cheaper than a button. These mother effing buttons at the convention cost a dollar a piece. They're tiny, tiny, tiny little buttons or stickers that cost a dollar a piece. It's, it's, this is officially, this is vintage merchandise official from Inuyasha. You see people surround it. People get there, they get really excited. They're, they're picking at cards. They're like, oh wow, look at this. And they're telling each other stories of how they watch Inuyasha. I used to watch Inuyasha. Um, when it was on the uh, midnight, whatever this thing, it was like at midnight or one. So I had to record it. So then like I had a friend record it for me and it was <laughs> really, really good. Uh, his name was Bradshaw. We actually went to uh, NYU together and he was a great friend because he would just record it for me because I didn't have Cartoon Network and whatever. And my parents obviously didn't want me to stay that up that late. So that's how I watched it. And you just tell people the stories and what the anime means to you, what these characters were, and that's pretty cool. Uh, that's what magic is for me. That's what magic has always been. Um, if you sell me your collection, yeah, I do want to know why you're selling. I do want to, you know, I will stay here and you can tell me about your cards and your history and we'll talk back. You know, I'll sit here for four or five hours. People might have got to use the bathroom. <laughs> you know, they go, they go, they obviously use the bathroom before they come and then they still have to use the bathroom. That tells you like, hey, they've been here a pretty long time, right? And that is what Fire Emblem is. And I'm a big proponent of Fire Emblem Cypher. This game was, I didn't even know existed until recently. And I bought a collection. I thought it would be in English. And then I learned that the game was never in English. It was always in Jap Japanese. And they would just import them from Japan. <laughs> I was like, hmm, that doesn't sound really effective, like, but okay. Um, my main takeaway for card games and what they mean in my life today is that it's a good way. It's a, it's a fun way to share old memories that are very, very positive that I don't really get to relive very often. And it's a really cool way that, you know, and for the Inuyasha for instance, they came out with a new Inuyasha and the parents of, you know, a lot of people my age have kids and then their kids are into the new shit series. And it's awesome that they can get a vintage collectible item for pennies, for basically pennies, right? And their parents are excited. They're going through the cards with their kids. And, you know, I mean, it, it sounds very, very, very mm, mushy, right? Which I don't like. <laughs> I'm definitely not one for mushy uh, statements. But in truth, I think what is happening in my mind, what, what I, why I love this, is I actually love these games. And I want them to do well. I want these IPs to do really well. Pokemon will be fine. You know, I'm not worried about Pokemon. I'm a little worried about magic. Um, so when it's interesting, you know, when somebody sells their vintage collection, I hope that they eventually come back to magic in some way. Maybe MTG Arena or maybe something else, right? Uh, same with Inuyasha, when somebody buys these Inuyasha cards and they get excited, you put them in top loader, they think it's the best thing ever. Um, I think Fire Emblem will be that for the next, like after five years, you gotta give it a little bit of time, right? The game just died. Um, and that's what it means to me. 
I don't go to these anime conventions to make money. If we break even, I consider that a pretty good convention. If we, because I'm paying people, I'm paying people to be there. And so it's expensive when you pay them 10, 12 hours a day to be there, right? They're obviously, you gotta pay them overtime. Same with my card shop. The, I have money. These things lose me money. My card shop loses me money. The reason I have them is because I think it is important to convey this history, the, the history of why and the history of this game and you know, to a, I wouldn't say a younger, I mean, maybe yes, hopefully to a younger generation, but more to the point, people who are passionate about Inuyasha, who haven't seen Inuyasha for a long time, they see these cards and they're like, oh, I remember these cards. You see their eyes light up, they get really passionate, they start buying chunks of these bulks, right? Bulk cards, they're buying all their favorite characters, they're really excited, they're talking to you about, oh, I remember this episode, I remember that episode. That's something you can't really duplicate. That's something that you're bringing actual joy that did not exist before. I mean, that's very, as I get older, I real, I, you know, I have enough money to retire now. Uh, I realize that yes, money is nice, but the more money you have, the more insulated you are from that joy, if that makes sense. Like you, you don't feel that same excitement, but when I, that person is excited, they found a Sango card or Moroku, you know, and you know, back then, harassment was a little different for anime. So you had this character called Moroku who was always harassing female characters all the time. It was a funny, it was a funny joke. Today, it would definitely be not appropriate. They would cancel the show based on just this one character having this one trait, this womanizer character who was uh, doing bad things uh, to women. That back then was like, oh, well, I guess he just does it. Aha, uh -huh, very funny. Even as a kid, you go, oh, this is kind of weird, but okay, I guess it's just the character. Um, yeah, people get excited and I share that joy too. So it's like, what makes me happy? Well, the more money you have, the less, it's kind of like, I guess, dopamine. Like you've already had, like when your business is successful and you're like, oh shit, we made money. We made it. Um, that's a huge dopamine hit. And then any other dopamine hit afterwards that would normally be very high isn't high. So I, my dopamine hit is when somebody is really excited they, they either show their passion, they are excited to buy something that, at a good price or, because I, I don't have that hit anymore. Like, you know, hi guys. <laughs>